Welcome to your weekly dose of Mainly Facts. Get ready to embark on a journey through captivating narratives, mind-blowing facts, and hidden secrets from strangers. By subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications, you'll ensure that you'll always be in the loop, never missing any of our awe-inspiring videos. Whether you're seeking entertainment while doing chores or simply craving a fascinating experience, our content is for you. So, let's start. Law enforcers, have you ever come across a crime so stupid or ridiculous that you just let it slip? Story 1. I was a cop for about seven years, and toward the last few years of that time, I found myself searching for more and more reasons not to take people to jail. I had drunks park their cars and give them rides, teenagers smoking weed, throw it out and be on their way, and realized that arresting people wasn't always the best solution to their mistake. Not everyone can go to jail, should go to jail. One night I drove through a dark parking lot and noticed a lone vehicle parked in the back and a small light inside. I assumed it would be teenagers doing their thing or someone smoking. I approached the car on foot and didn't use my flashlight until I was right up on the car. I turned on my light to see a guy naked, alone in the front seat of his car, fapping. I tell him I'm in the police and he rolls down the window. I ask what he's doing and he says, I'm jerking off. I shined my light in the back seat and saw he had a car full of groceries. I asked him about the groceries. He said, My wife gets peed when I jerk off at home, so I came out here to do it. Do you mind? Dumbfounded, I really don't know what to say, and said, reminding him that I could arrest him for public indecency. He laughs and tells me to go ahead. Taking a step back, I thought about his situation. The dude just wanted to rub one out in peace. So I told him to hurry it up and be on his way. He thanked me and rolled up the window. Turning around, I yell back at him, Why do you have to be completely naked? He responds, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to freaking do it right. I laughed and walked away. I hope that man had a good fap. I might have some problems with uh, police officers and more of the police system, but I do like hearing about folks like you who realize that jail isn't always the right solution. And uh, I hope that you were able to find a better job after uh, those seven years as a cop. And I hope that you made a positive difference in some people's lives. Sound like you made a difference in that guy's life, I guess. <laughs> Story 2. Not the U.S. To clarify for everyone asking, this was in South Africa in the early 90s. When I was in high school, the rugby team found out I had learned how to drive, but not yet received my license. They all knew I did not drink, so one of them had the genius idea of inviting me to parties as the designated driver. We'd lost a popular kid to a drunken accident a few months earlier, so it was actually a good idea. It was a great arrangement, lots of parties, lots of girls, and all I had to do was get them home in one piece afterwards. It went great for a few weeks, until one night. The police had heard there was a big party on a farm outside of town and decided to set up a roadblock. So I came driving up to the flashing lights, car filled with five big drunk guys, including one passed out with his head, out the window. And little scrawny me barely able to look over the steering wheel. And the inside of the car smells like a brewery. The officer takes one look at the car, asks me to step out. Have you been drinking? Uh, no, officer. I don't drink. Has me take a breathalyzer? Zero. Looks at me. Can I see your driver's license? Uh, sorry, officer. I don't have one yet. I'm getting it next week. And I point back towards the car. But they have theirs. He looked at me, flipped his little book closed, and said, Just take them home. Next time I see you, you better have your license. In the U.S., we have a huge DD support movement. You'd have probably gotten a medal or something where I'm from. Plus, I live in a really rural area where, yeah, underage driving is kind of normal as long as you have a good reason. Honestly, that's a hell of a good reason, and good on you for being a designated driver. Seriously, that is something that any of you who like to drink and party really need to employ. Never drink and drive, please. I have lost friends to that. And unfortunately, you probably will at some point in your life, too. Story 3. I was actually observing the following exchange in court. A lady received a ticket for a seat cushion violation. So in my state, Florida, if you are unusually short for whatever reason, you get a restriction on your license that says you need a booster seat to drive. Makes logical sense. Here's how the exchange went. So, Ms. Whatever, you're here for a seat cushion violation. Wait, is that even a thing? Lengthy exchange with the state attorney followed. They put white noise in so we couldn't hear it, but the judge was laughing her butt off the whole time. Well, okay, that's a new one. How tall are you? Five foot two, your honor. 
So you're not that short, really. Do you have a restriction on your license? No, your honor. The officer said I looked really short and he needed it. Wait, what? Case dismissed. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. My British spelling is apparently blowing people's minds. I've lived in Florida for 14 years, but was born in England. I still spell the English way is all. I live in Florida and my wife is five foot one. I'm sharing that with her. Story four. When I was about 17, some friends and I got involved in a scavenger hunt. It was a tie. So the tiebreaker was bring back the coolest thing you can find. We didn't get anything special, but the other group, they went to a dollar store type place that had a coin operated horse in front of it. It was about 1 a.m., no other cars in the lot besides an 86 Nova driven by my friend. They start to dismantle this horse, eventually getting it apart, put it in the back of the Nova with the head sticking out the window, and drove off. They got about 15 feet before the two cops that were watching them the entire time pull up. They ended up having to put this horse back together, then made everyone ride it to make sure it still worked. My good friend was scared and crying riding a mechanical horse. After I heard this story, I knew the cops probably thought it was the funniest thing they had seen in a long time. I mean, I guess the punishment fits the crime, and a lesson was learned. But also, they really would have probably won that scavenger hunt if they had gotten away with it. I would have been impressed. Story 5. Not a police officer, but I witnessed it happen. I got a phone call from a police officer using my buddy's phone. Apparently my buddy, a jackbutt, got so drunk he fell out of his car in the drive through line at Taco Cabana. The cop told me I had 15 minutes to get there and pick up my friend. I made it in time and the officer helped me throw my friend into the bed of my truck. He told me to take my friend home and when he woke up, told him he was a freaking idiot. The police officer was a homicide detective in the major city in which we lived and he said he had real crimes to solve and to stop wasting his time. I want to believe you guys literally threw him into the truck bed. Story 6. As a young patrolman in the Air Force Security Police got a call from an office referencing possible sabotage or theft of classified material. I remember thinking how this could be a huge case. I was thinking ahead about all the questions to ask and who would have to get called in. I get to the office, get all the basic identifying information from the complaint slash victim. I asked her what made her think there was sabotage going on, and she told me that the last couple days she's been coming to work and data on her two and a half inch discs, yes, I'm old enough for those, has been erased. So I ask her where she stores her disc. She turns to her whiteboard and, crap you not, pulls her disc out from under a magnet. I actually stood there blank-faced in awe as this woman who developed complex systems for the military held this disc out to me. All I could say was, ma'am, do you know what happens to a magnetic storage device when you expose it to a magnetic field generated by, say, a magnet? Welcome to my life. Welcome to technical support. This is typical customer behavior, and then they expect you to fix it. Head desk. This is why I have never tried to go for a career in technical support, IT, whatever. And this is why I also never let family or friends know that I know a decent bit about computers. I'm not great, but I've built my own computers before, so I know enough. But if they knew, they would call me and ask me questions about stuff like this. And I can't. I won't. Story 7. My friend has been learning to become a tattoo artist and asked me if I wanted one. To repay his kindness, I picked up a 30-pack and some tequila. After about three hours of him digging in with the gun and most of the beers and booze gone, we came up with the plan. We were going to go to the city and score some dope. Didn't take long and we accomplished just that. We found a nice, quiet, dimly lit parking lot to pull in and get to get high. We broke out the gear and started. He got his ready faster and got it done. I was out of practice and fumbled around for a bit. Just then, someone knocked on the window. It's the cops. We rolled down the window and they asked if we knew where we were. Before we can say anything, the cops said, This is a friggin' police station parking lot. Are you friggin' dumb? They took the dope and sent us on our way. And I now have 13 years clean thanks to that cop. That story was great in more ways than one. Thanks for sharing. Professionals in any field of work, what is the most ridiculous thing that anyone outside of your profession has claimed to know more about than you? Story 1. I had a lady ask me what makes me qualified to tell her she needs to go to the hospital. I'm a paramedic. It's literally what I get paid to do. 
Edit, I work for a local government fire department that also provides ALS, advanced life support, ambulance services. We don't get paid per call. We work in a low-income area where no one has insurance and fewer pay their bills. The local hospital is going under and needs bailouts every year because they have so few paying customers and our government pesticides those bailouts. If I transport someone out, it takes money from my pocket and costs the taxpaying citizens. There are no incentives for me to transport someone to the hospital that doesn't need it. None. It takes me a minimum of 30 minutes to transport someone or five minutes tops to get a refusal of care. Trust me, if I say you need to go, you need to go. I know people can sometimes be reluctant to trust people when it comes to medical stuff because, especially here in the United States, medical bills are not small. They are terrifying and sometimes life-ruining. But boy... If someone who's a paramedic says that you need to go to the hospital, you should probably go to the hospital. Your life is worth more than any bill. Story two. I'll share with you something a nurse said. Well, you don't know what you're doing. Let me speak to your supervisor. I handed the phone to the pathologist and she ripped her a new one. So I'm a blood banker. Patient's blood type is A+, and the baby's type is O+. Nurse was insisting I made a mistake because there's no way A-plus mom could have an O-plus baby. I explained to her that mom's genotype could be A-O, and the dad could be another A-O, B-O, or O. Nope, I had to be wrong because there is no way. Final straw was, well, I had four years of college and I think I know more than you. To which I reply, so did I, but I got a master's and a graduate training program, so how about I'll let you talk to my boss? I know many great nurses, but once in a while, someone goes on a power trip and it makes me boil. Story 3. Got in an argument with a woman at Whole Foods. She wanted to buy grass-fed pork. There is no such thing. Grass cannot support a pig. They have to eat a heavy grain-filled diet. Woman did not believe me or my 10 years of farm and meat selling experience. Got to the point I told the woman I would ship her a piglet so she could raise it completely on grass and watch it die from starvation. I don't do demos at Whole Foods anymore. Try working there full time. A customer actually yelled at me because she saw me spraying a slicer down with a food grade sanitizing solution. She said I was putting chemicals in everyone's bodies and I was killing everybody. What I was actually doing was cleaning the damn slicer so I don't give my customers a food borne illness. But no matter what I said, I was wrong, and I should just clean it with water. My manager had to get involved, and he just told me, Congratulations, you've survived your first misinformed psycho customer. Keep cleaning the slicer. Story 4. I used to work in auto detailing. The one thing we never did was power wash the motor of a 90s model Jaguar. The electronics were sensitive, and the slightest amount of pressure would make the instrument panel light up like a Christmas tree. A dealer wanted us to clean this fleet of Jaguars, so we did, all nine of them. He checked the motors, and one of them still had a little dirt on it, and he got peed. He starts yelling at me, so I explain, Jer, the electronics are super sensitive. The slightest amount of high pressure could cause the instrument panel to light up. We have to hand wipe the motor with wet wags and cleaner. Sometimes we miss a spot. He calls his porter over and tells him to bring that car around to the repair side, and he'll clean it himself. He opens the hood, grabs a garden hose, and starts blasting the engine bay. See? Clean! I say to him, absolutely. He goes and starts the car, looks down, shuts the car off, gets out, and apologizes. I am a smart enough person to know that I know very little about cars and the computers that are in them. And so if someone who works on cars tells me not to do something to my car... I will not do that thing. I will absolutely believe them. Does this make me an easy mark for bad mechanics? Probably. Does this also mean that I wouldn't spray a hose into the engine of my car? Definitely. Story 5. A lady brought her husband in for elective surgery and he required general anesthesia. She comes in with an old dog-eared book and asks to have a meeting with the surgery team. We humor her, and apparently she wanted specific anesthetic agents for her husband, since she did research on all of them. All the agents she wanted were essentially removed years ago due to harsh side effects, or there were better medications. When I looked at her book, it was published in 1965. I don't know how I feel about people questioning doctors. The other day on here, a person told a story about how she got pertussis from some kids with anti-vax parents years and years ago. 
Her mom had to repeatedly shove it in the doctor's face until they finally tested her for it. She almost died. I've read countless stories about stuff like that. And then there are loons trying to talk about highly technical stuff like anesthesia with a 1965 book. Story 6. I'm a welder. One of the biggest hazards I face is UV damage to my eyes from the electric welding arc. That crap is incredibly bright, and just a glimpse of it can leave spots on your vision for hours at best. I once had some random guy try and tell me that only the initial flash is dangerous when you're welding, and that after you strike an arc, you can just stare at it without any trouble at all. Commercial construction diver. I just had a guy serving from a food truck tell me that he was welding on a dock in a lake, which was very dangerous because water becomes flammable under pressure. I told him that was very brave. Story 7. Being any medical professional and with literally anything. I had a patient once tell me she wouldn't do birth control because it caused AIDS. She was very polite about it and said she understood that us doctors weren't allowed to tell patients the truth. Okay, lady. Enjoy your fifth baby. Another lady did not believe me at all when I told her seven C-sections was a dangerous amount and the eighth section could cause many complications to her and the baby. Well, they got seven out easily, so what's one more? Well, it takes them a lot longer and longer with each section, so it probably got harder with each one. Well, I was there, so I would know. <laughs> okay. Folks, you really gotta stop questioning doctors. Like... Yeah, if a doctor wants you to do some big, like, expensive thing that they say, you know, isn't necessary, but, oh, you mean it could probably help or whatever, you know? Yeah, maybe question them on that or something. But when a doctor's life, when a doctor says, please don't do this thing, it could really kill, it could kill you. It could really affect you in a very bad way. And you just go, nah, I think I'll be fine. Don't do that. No, listen to the doctor. Story 8. I work in legal compliance in the finance industry. I run into people doing illegal crap all the time. Claimed that it's the law. I can tell you how many pieces of legislation I have read cover to cover and how long I spent making sure I'm up to date with any legal changes in my field, and yet I still get this sort of thing. Me. Hi, a client has told me that she's been declined for a, for a loan from you. Her. Yeah, we can't lend to anyone who uses your company. Me. Sorry, what? Why not? Her. It's against the law. Me. Which law? Her. It's a new law. Me. Could you tell me the name of it so I can check this? Her. Hangs up the phone. Story 9. I used to work as an anthropologist for a tribe-run museum on protected Native American land. They had built a museum to display finds from excavations, spread knowledge about the history of their people, and also create a little revenue for their community center. Well, a local town, mostly white, upper-class families, took offense to our work. They claimed we were destroying the tribe's culture without any right by excavating. It culminated in a group sending the museum a letter where they basically said the tribe members were not educated enough to understand how their culture was being destroyed and were simply not intelligent enough to make decisions in regard to activity on their land. That went over real well. Wow! Just, wow, that's, I, I, I just, I can't even with that. My mind is like twisting in discomfort and like these people sound like Michael Scott from the office times 10, the absolute lack of awareness and just offensiveness. Good Lord. What is your most, what the F customer service experience? Story two. Our waitress brings us our drinks and says she'll be back in a bit to take our food orders. We're conversing and such, so we don't notice immediately how long it is taking our waitress to come back. We wait another 20 minutes just in case. The place is pretty empty, so eventually we ask another server if they know what happened to our server. He says he'll go check, but that he'll take our food order if we're ready to speed up the process. Things seem on the up and up, so we stop worrying. About 45 minutes later, my dad is about to explode. It doesn't take that long to make four sandwiches. He's about to complain when, as if on cue, our waitress comes running and screaming out of the kitchen and goes right out the front door. Everyone goes completely silent and just watches the front door for a couple seconds. 
It turns out she had a nervous breakdown right about when we ordered her food. She had been just pacing around in the kitchen, slowly becoming unhinged. The manager apologized, and we got free sandwiches. The moral of the story, though, is that you never know what's going on with your server. Maybe they are doing a bad job, but they might be on the edge of snapping entirely. Yeah, this is why I always try and be a little generous with my tips, even if the waitress or delivery driver or whomever is a little late or not the best. Sometimes people are just having really bad days, and frankly, me not giving them a good tip isn't going to make their day any better. And I know I said, you know, do your job, don't inconvenience other people if you can, but come on, we've all had some really crappy days. You can't blame someone. I mean, I guess you can, but maybe just try and be understanding while you're blaming them. Story 3. Last weekend, I went to the beach with my friend. We had booked a hotel room with two queen beds. For whatever reason, there was an administrative error and the hotel had forgotten to reserve our room. We get there and there are no rooms with two beds left. The front desk agent was very apologetic and offered us an extra room at no charge because, duh, they effed up. Until the owner of the place moseyed on in and instead said, no, if you want two rooms, you're going to pay for two rooms, and asked us why we couldn't just sleep together in a king bed, which is not really his business. I mean, if we wanted to share a bed, we would have booked a room with one bed instead of specifically booking a room with two. If we had known they were out of rooms, we would have gone somewhere else. At that point, he insisted on us staying in one room with a cot, which I said was BS because one of us is sleeping on a cot and it's not something we agreed to pay for. Eventually, after two hours of arguing, he effed off and his son, who is the part owner and the one who suggested giving two rooms for the cost of one in the first place, let us have two rooms. His dad is clearly in the wrong effing business. Yeah, interesting that uh, he is uh, the owner of a hospitality business and is not very hospitable at all. And yeah, I understand that these mix-ups kind of happen. I worked in a hotel. Sometimes wires get crossed or you end up short of rooms because of maintenance, stuff like that. It happens, but you always go the extra step to make sure that your guests are getting everything that they paid for, if not more, never less. Story 4. My parents and I decided to try a new, trendy pizza place right around the corner from my apartment one night last month. We decided to sit outside because the weather was nice and they had a big patio and a side deck. Everyone working at this place had an attitude, from the hostess who seated us to the waitress taking our orders. They made us feel like a huge inconvenience, but we were hungry and had heard the pizza was good, so we tried to look past that. As soon as we are seated on the patio, the girl offers to lower the shades because the sun was setting and was directly in our line of sight. We say that would be great, and a guy comes out and lowers the blinds for us. We order our drinks and look over the menu. Not even five minutes later, a young guy comes to our table, incredibly peed off that the blinds were lowered. In a very condescending manner, he tells us that he's going to have to raise the blinds because they trap heat in the patio, ultimately raising the patio temperature about 20 degrees. My dad politely tells him that the sun is in her eyes and that they really shouldn't offer to lower the shades if it's going to cause a problem. The guy snaps. He is incredibly disrespectful toward my father and goes on a tangent assuring us that the sun would set and even going so far as to take his sunglasses off of his head and offering them to my dad. He's young, maybe 25, and treating us like we're imbeciles, saying that our request to lower the shades would make the other customers less comfortable. Whatever, they raise the blinds, and we question whether or not we'll stay to order food. We stay, our drinks arrive, and we take a few more minutes to look over the menu. The waitress is nowhere to be found. We sit there in awkward silence, trying to get past what had just happened. Other tables are seated, and the hostess offers to lower the shades for each table. We finish our drinks, and the waitress still hasn't returned to take our order. We contemplate leaving, but she finally shows, and we order. The food came out cold, but one of the managers was walking around asking how everything was. We told him about the sunglasses prick, and he was furious. I haven't seen the guy working there since. Boy, when you've got that many workers who are just not hitting the mark, it always makes me wonder how the management or owner of a place like that is. Because there are a lot of restaurants where you get just the worst managers, and that's going to make everyone else miserable, and they're not going to do good at customer service. I'm not saying that that's definitely what happened there, and that 25-year-old glasses guy was definitely in the wrong, but 
Yeah, you got to wonder how that restaurant's going to do in the long term, assuming it's even still around. Story five. So the past weekend, we went to a restaurant for dinner with my girlfriend and her friends for her birthday. We had about 10 people and had about five different tabs, which all included an 18% minimum tip. The service was terrible. The server was incredibly rude and would always respond with some kind of sarcasm when we asked questions about the menu. He took the wrong drink orders twice and blamed us for getting them wrong, brought all the apps and entrees at the same time and got upset when we said we didn't want the apps anymore. My friend paid in cash, and when he brought back change, there was no receipt. She was expecting to see five bucks and some change back. When the server came back, there was no receipt and only four bucks and change there. She asked him to see the receipt to see if she had miscalculated because she expected five dollars and then some back. Instead of saying something along the lines of, I'll go check or something accommodating like that, the dude got irritated and said that he threw away the receipt and reached for his wallet and said, how about I just give you a dollar if you want it that bad? That peed us all off, so we didn't leave any extra tip. I wrote down nope on my receipt in the additional tip line. When I went to use the men's room before leaving, he tapped my shoulders as I was washing my hands and goes, you think you're pretty funny with that tip, don't you? Why don't we step outside so he can show you how funny I can be? I'm like, what the F? Called the manager over and told him his server wanted to fight me because I didn't tip him. Explained the whole situation to her while the dude was just IFing me the whole time. Other servers had to calm him down because he kept trying to interrupt me when I was talking to the manager. I declined all their gift cards because F, I don't want to come back to a place where the staff is going to shank me. Okay, this is going so far beyond like, you know, oh, this workplace is bad and so a server's being a little bit lazy or, you know, not paying attention stuff. This is just a person being an absolute jerk. And as bad as that place might be to work and as crappy for that person as it may be, you don't take it out on your customers like that. Not to that degree. That's ridiculous. Story six. Well, I have one from the opposite side. I used to work at the cancellation department of a major ISP who shall remain nameless. Our shtick was basically they call, try to cancel. We either talk them out of it or bribe them out of it with free time or refunds or whatever it takes. Now, it was a stressful job because this ISP sucked, and because it was lower end and the customers tended to not be on the more technical side of things. So we got a great variety of calls that made us feel like crap on a daily basis. Once when the servers were down, I spent 12 hours getting screamed at by people because I couldn't cancel their accounts. One man put every single member of his entire family of five on the phone to scream at me. Sigh. Anyway, this one time, I get a woman. She sounds young, and she has a cutesy email address. I get into my shtick about her bill and how it's important to have internet. I hear kids, so I go into the whole important for school thing, so I try that. She's pretty nice and tells me she would love to keep it, but she can't. So I go through the whole, well, if it's something we can fix, yada yada. Nope. She tells me that her and her two sons just moved into a homeless shelter and that her husband died. She really wants to keep the account, and she wants to desperately keep the email because she has a bunch of resumes out, but she can't even afford the $2 to keep the email account open. So I put her on hold and go to cancel her account. I must have sat there for a few seconds thinking, just staring at her bill history. She had paid religiously, so I had an idea. I refunded her. Every single payment she had ever made. It took me a little while, and when I went back to the phone, I tried explaining to her that because of her financial troubles, she was getting a refund. She didn't understand at first. I had to repeat myself a few times and then explain exactly what I had done. Her card had been canceled because of non-payment, but I had just dumped several hundred dollars in refunds into it. I had paid off her credit card. She wept. Not just sobs or sniffles, openly wept like a child. It got all emotional, thanking me and crying and having her little kids say thank you. It was nice. Man, just when you thought this thread was going to be nothing but stories of human misery and angry people, you get something like this and it just brightens up your whole day. That that really put just a huge smile on my face. I like to hear about people who find any little way that they can help other humans out. So, cheers to you, OP. When did that rich kid lose all his wealth?
Story three. Most of the friends in our circle turned 18 and it was time for getting our license and trying to flex with our cars like every other teenager does. Most of us didn't even have our own cars and we used to borrow our parents' car when they were kind enough to give us their keys. However, some butt had the luck and money to earn their own cars. So it was the case for my friend Paul, who got an Audi RS for his 18th birthday. Truly a beast of a car having more than 400 horsepower. Definitely way more than a teenager needs. Either way, we had this spot where all of us got together on weekends. He used to show up revving the car that his folks got him trying to impress everyone. This one night it was raining, so a couple of my friends were practicing drifting. Of course, he wanted to show us how it's done. All said and done, he pushed the pedal to the metal, turned the wheel, and lost control. There was smoke all over, and we barely saw him, but we heard a loud noise, and then we knew that he messed up. He smashed the rear bar of his precious car into a pole in the parking lot. One of his wheels came off, and basically the car was unable to run because of this. There were tiny pieces of metal all scattered across the ground, and the airbags popped. Luckily, he hadn't suffered any injuries or anything. However, after that, he was always walking to school. Also, we stopped seeing him on the weekends as well. Probably the only car he was riding in now was his Uber. Story 4. I had this rich kid in my school, one of the most arrogant people I knew. You know the type, the silver-spooned brat who didn't need to work for a thing in their lives and thought the world revolved around him because he was spoiled as a child. From what I knew, his dad used to make a lot of money back in the days when he was working for a big hedge fund in London. He had everything, a nice Mercedes at 18, holidays paid for, every year he used to go to a place like Paris and Switzerland. You know, the ideal scenario. The problem was not that his parents were rich and he was enjoying the money, that's only normal. We all are working hard trying to provide the best life for our children. The problem was that he acted like he owned everything, like he'd done everything by himself. Many people started to notice that and told him that he's way too arrogant and that he wouldn't have anything if it weren't for his dad. All of that was true, of course, but as you know, truth can really hurt people. So he wanted to prove everyone wrong. So he bought this fancy trading course because he wanted to learn how to play the stock market just like his father did. I've heard he maxed his dad's credit card to fund his trading account. He has this so-called trading strategy that would triple his investment in three weeks. That trading strategy was basically putting all your money into a cryptocurrency and getting passive gains from that every day. He put all his money in BitConnect. He lost everything after the first week. We haven't seen him around school since then. Months later, we saw him working at Burger King. He told us that his father is no longer giving him any money and asked him to move out of the house. What's with people who already have everything but want to ruin it all? Just be humble. Flipping burgers might teach him that. I have a hard time wrapping my head around he wanted to prove to people that he could make his own money, and so he maxed out his father's credit cards to play the stock market. I mean, I guess the money he would make from that would be what he did but it was still just his father's money like he's not starting from nothing do rich people not understand that when you start off with thousands tens of thousands hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars from your parents you're not starting from scratch and making your own fortune if you have money you can usually make money though if you try and do a ridiculous scheme like this it might not go well Story 5. So I used to know this kid whose father was a political figure. Everyone knew he was quite corrupt and made tons of money, but we used to live in an Eastern European country, so things like corruption were quite common. He used to spoil his kid with everything, like most rich parents do. He wasn't a bad guy or anything, but he was always so arrogant it just got on my nerves. He basically had everything financially settled for him, but this wasn't enough. He used to hang around my neighborhood and people would make fun of him because he was short and all that. Your typical bullying scenario. So what did he do? Well, he figured that he should start selling the devil's lettuce because that would get him respect in the neighborhood and the respect will be enough to live up with his arrogance. So this kid who basically had everything that he desired and was always bragging about it risked his freedom trying to sell drugs just like all the other poor people because he thought it would be cool.
That was the perfect recipe for disaster. It took about a year and a half until he got caught. The fool was selling to an undercover cop. Obviously, the agents were more interested in him because of his father's political exposure and the amount of attention the case would get. After the investigation, he was given two years in juvenile prison. Some years after that, his family was still under investigation for different corruption allegations of his father. So it goes that the father was jailed afterwards, being found guilty of political corruption and taking bribes. You can sort of say it was like a like-father-like-son type of scenario. I guess the point of the story is to be happy with what you have, and even if you have more than others, don't brag about it. A loud mouth can easily be shut. Story 6. I was best friends with this kid during the first years of high school. We were literally such good friends, shared our lunches, shared the same bench during classes, talked about girls, you know, your usual stuff. One summer, after the school year finished, he told me he would be away. Apparently his dad had this new business deal that had to take care of in Dubai. So I will only get to see him at the beginning of the next school year. I was truly gutted that we won't get spend the summer together like we usually did, but I understood the situation. When next year started, I saw him showing up in a brand new car wearing fancy clothes, which is not like him because he used to be really laid back about all that stuff. I approached him to say hello, and he instantly dismissed me, saying that he shouldn't hang out with people poorer than him because it's just a waste of time. I couldn't believe my ears. How can someone change so drastically in such a short period of time? I was absolutely shocked. I tried to approach him the next day as well, asking if everything is alright with him. However, this time I was met with complete silence. I couldn't stand his arrogance. In the middle of the school year, I stopped seeing him around school. Thought that something terrible had happened, so I've asked my teacher if he heard anything from him or his parents. She told me that my friend abandoned school because he was not able to afford it anymore. He went to a private school. I found that really strange at the time. Why would someone exhibit that rich and arrogant attitude if they're poor? I found out months later while reading a news article that his dad was found guilty of fraud. Apparently, he was involved in some sort of pyramid or Ponzi scheme that would fool investors to chip in their funds, but then never saw a return on their investment. Truly low stuff. His father was jailed for seven years, and the son, my colleague and ex-friend, was jailed for three years because he acted as an accomplice to the whole fraud. I can't believe the stupid things people do for money. The truly ironic thing is that he couldn't even enjoy the money because they were dirty. Make sure you send out a positive message to your kids. You know, you always hear about money changing people, but I never expected it would happen that fast where over one summer this kid went from like hey we're friends everything's great to coming back after a few months and being like sorry i got money screw off like i i guess i don't know exactly how true or if things are exaggerated but boy oh boy folks if you get money don't let it twist you like this remember as easily as that money may have came, it can go just as easily. So stay humble. Keep your friends. Those are the things that'll stick around and that actually matter. I sound like a sound like an after school special. <laughs> Story seven. You know when you spot that someone has a problem, like an addiction issue, for example, but you simply don't know what to say to make things better? This was the case with a friend of mine. His parents were filthy rich. I mean, like, oil rich. His dad was a self-made millionaire in the oil industry, and his mom got an online shopping business. Essentially, he was all right as a teenager, but everyone kept telling him that he did not earn his money and that he does not deserve all the nice things in his life. I found it a bit harsh that he was judged l like that by people that didn't even know him. Anyway, in time, he sort of developed this complexity that he needs to work for his own money and not depend on his parents' funding, which I found truly remarkable, coming from someone who didn't need to work a day in his life because everything was sorted for him. However, I think he wanted to prove to others more than to himself that he can make his own money. All said and done, he got a job that required no experience because he didn't have any anyway. He started as a waiter in a restaurant because it was the only place that would hire him. After the first week, he got fired because he used to turn up late for work. So he discovered another way of making money, and this was through gambling. He used to go to poker nights and play roulette with the pocket money his parents gave him, which was around thousands of dollars. When you don't think about the things you have to lose, your gambling gets better, I guess. 
After his first winnings, he started to act all arrogant, claiming that he made all his money from his business endeavors, which was obviously untrue. When I confronted him why he lied, he simply told me that I should shut up and that he would hurt me if I told anyone. My friend has changed because of money, and he didn't even need that money. It all escalated when he got into a massive gambling debt because he lost a couple of hundred thousand on poker. I told him that he could sell one of his three superpowers to pay for the debts because otherwise some dangerous people will get to him. Obviously he didn't listen, and just like any other responsible gambler would do, he doubled down on his money. So he went on stealing all the gold from his house, his mom was really into jewelry, and bet on it hoping he would be able to pull through. He lost it. He lost everything, and now he was in trouble. This was the last time I've seen him. He wrote me a couple of months later apologizing for the fact that he was so arrogant and how this caused him to go down his path. He also told me that his dad keeps him on a monthly, limited allowance now until he learns how to manage his money and so on. Why is it that we always want more when we already have everything? Parents, what is the most absurd thing you have found on your kids' social media? Well, folks, before we get to just so many stories about kids typing in wieners and vahoohoos into uh, search histories and stuff like that. Uh, hi, if you don't know from the videos yesterday and earlier today, you get to see my face now. I'm here, I'm real, and I'm made of flesh, and definitely not uh, some sort of AI-powered CGI thing to fool you all. I'm mm, so, so real. Um, also, just so you know, might be doing a little AMA here on the channel somewhat soon, so if you've got questions for me, leave them in the comments below. And leave your stories in the comments below. We could do a, we could do a video on your stories, stories, you know, but the thing I say at the end, you know, I, <coughs> I just, <you> video. <coughs> <coughs> Story one. The old friend of mine was a younger brother with some disabilities, mostly mental. When he lived at home with him around the age of 16, my friend caught him whomping his peen, <laughs> don't ask, to bondage adult entertainment. He later made an account on a sort of fetish or swinger website with a profile saying he was looking for someone to come to the family house and punish him. He used part of his tugboat money to pay for a taxi ride for a woman old enough to be his mother to come to their house for this, and she actually showed up, but she arrived as their parents came home and they had to meet. He quickly tried to make up a story about house cleaning, but she was firm and direct with the explanation. From then on, he had absolutely no internet access, with his brother going so far as to remove connection ports slash components from his computer to stop hot wiring of any kind. These days, he lives in an adult care home where he still has absolutely no internet access. There was an incident in 2014 where he stole someone's smartphone and locked himself in a closet, speeding through adult entertainment and trying to access his fetish site until the battery died and he was lured back up with food. All right. I used to work in group homes with people with... Uh, varying uh, levels of uh, developmental uh, disabilities and hurdles to overcome. Awesome people. I really loved that job. Um, and I will say, we did have a client or two who was interested in seeing some adult entertainment and whatnot. And uh, when there were meetings and stuff about it, I was always the person vocally going, they're adults. They're adults who have, most of them have day jobs. They should have some autonomy. Let them, let them do it. Let them watch this stuff. Let them, I mean, I know we can't necessarily have the door locked because we might need to check on them based on certain conditions they may have. We had clients who might have seizures, stuff like that. And so it's a little more complicated and maybe there's a little more knowledge that not everyone's super comfortable with, but they're still adults, you know, and they should have rights. They should have privacy. They should get to make decisions. So, I don't know. I don't know all the things about this scenario. And obviously, that first thing was around the age of 16, which don't, no, don't do that. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. That's that's my 
I was going to say two words about it, but clearly it's a few more than that. Story two. Pictures of my daughter, Eleven, posing quite harmlessly that went on to bum shots wearing shorts. Someone pretending to be 14-year-old girl asked her to do these shots for a modeling competition and sent similar shots so she knew how to pose. She eventually stopped the conversation. The pics came through my iPad-linked devices. Police got involved and also CEOP. They originated from an account in South Africa, so Interpol took over the case, and we will probably never get an update. Instagram never even bothered to respond to my report. This happened to the 12-year-old daughter of a friend of mine recently. She also happened across it much the same way and reported it to police. They ended up having a huge investigation involved with the FBI, and the guy has now been sentenced to jail. My friend's daughter was one of dozens he'd been soliciting. This right here is the reason why I don't think I could handle being a parent in the modern day. And I never will, hopefully. Um, I worry enough about my dogs. Seriously, the amount that I worry about them and the like overprotectiveness I have over them is worrisome. Um, if I had a kid... I would be like, no, you can never, you can never see the internet. And I'm go no, no devices, no phones, no tablets, nothing. Your school wants you to have the internet. I'm teaching you now in the woods. <laughs> I would be so freaked out about predators like this. I, I mean, I was about to say, I don't know how parents aren't more freaked out, but I've seen how stressed out and full of anxiety all you people are. You are stressed out. Ha ha. That's <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying, haha, like, I got you. No one's got anything. We're all living in a internet hellscape. Story three. When my son was eight, my wife was looking at his tablet and saw his comments on YouTube videos. Quite a few comments along the line of, you don't know what you're talking about, you dumb F mother sucker B, and others with randomly strung together cuss words that normally wouldn't be used together. He would get called out by others for the random cussing, and he would say, I'm only eight and I can do what I want, cuss word, other cuss word that doesn't go with the first cuss word. When we brought it up, he knew they were bad words, but was repeating other vulgar comments he saw from other comment trolls and didn't fully understand the harshness of his words. Now his YouTube habits are much more closely monitored, and he hasn't done anything like that since. Story 4. Not technically a parent, but an older sister. So my little brother, when he was around seven-ish, had a search history of naked women and such. And when my mother found out and confronted him, he cried and was saying he just wanted to be like Jack from the Titanic by drawing naked women. And he had a few pages of his attempted drawings. <laughs> Jack, pay me like one of your French girls. <laughs> <laughs> I just love this one so much. I don't have anything to add. Uh, this is the kind of comment that makes some of you so mad, but here it is. I'm just here to laugh about it because it's so funny. Story five. Well, I have childlike parents. Weirdest thing so far was having to sit down and have a talk with my mother about how some things on Facebook are not real. My extended family lives in Houston, and during Hurricane Harvey, my mother was driving my elderly relatives to hysteria by emailing them horribly photoshopped pictures of Houston landmarks submerged under 50 feet of water, followed by, It's a biblical flood. The world is ending. The news is lying to you. You're going to die if you don't get in your car and try to drive out of town right now. I talked to my stepdad and made her, him give me her password so I can shut down her account during the next natural disaster. Story 6. Had a coworker bring her kid during the summer so that she could run him to the local middle school for football practice when she took a break at 9. Since I was in training at the time, I was sitting with her at her desk and mine was not in use. To keep him occupied, I'd log into my computer and then she'd pull up YouTube so she could watch the Watch Me Whip song. Because apparently, kids will watch that crap for hours. Well, one day she goes over to check in on him and says in a confused voice, Who the heck is Ed Gein? So it turns out that it was still logged into my YouTube profile where I had taken to watching documentaries about serial killers, and the kid had clicked on one of the recommended videos. Whoopsies!
Story 7. My daughters are grown up now, but when one of them was around 14 or 15, I opened up her MySpace page. She was telling all the kids that her mother, that would be me, was a raging alcoholic. She was telling them how I was neglectful and I didn't like her. At the time, I was pregnant with twins working full-time and my husband was gone with the Marines a lot. I am not a drinker at all. Obviously, we had a long talk. She was feeling left out with all the excitement over the babies. Still, though, it was pretty hurtful. It took me a long time to get over that. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.